So just to introduce ourselves, for presenting, my name is Ratnaji Rao Mailavarpu. You can call me Rao Mailavarpu. I'm a business analyst and I work for Sales for Cripsy in the US. And I'm based in Tampa, Florida. So who is Cripsy Technologies? Cripsy is a leading blockchain solutions company based in New Jersey, but we have offices in Netherlands, Dubai, and also in India in two locations, Coimbatore and Bangalore. The company was founded in 2016 by Ravi Jagannathan, and our company consists of many experts in cryptography, and we use blockchain to help solve real-world problems such as in retail, finance, loyalty, and more. So, Cripsy is a proud system integrator for Hyperledger. Our main product involves using Hyperledger Fabric, and with this, we actually try to use it to make more efficient systems using Hyperledger Fabric. And as mentioned earlier, we do finance, healthcare, logistics, and for our tax platform, we're actually award-winning for it as well. So, just a quick glance, like I mentioned before, we're a member of the Hyperledger community. We also work with Hedera, AWS, Microsoft, and some select key end clients include Accenture, Honeywell, L Brands for Loyalty, Siemens, Trade Assets, Heineken, ATEC, and Mindhub as well. The main ones today we'll be focusing on is Mindhub, Heineken, Siemens for Tax Chain. So just a quick summary, we've been around for six years with 17 plus live applications, 50 plus use cases in multiple domains, with a team size of 40 plus globally, as I mentioned, Dubai, India, the US, and the Netherlands. We've had Fortune 500 clients such as Siemens. We have a strong R&D team led by Mohit for cryptography. We're IP and product focused and we have a global presence. So, starting off, we'll talk about Hyperledger Fabric itself. So, Hyperledger Fabric is a permission blockchain platform or protocol for enterprise use cases is how we use it for. It's open sourced under the Linux Foundation, under the Hyperledger umbrella, and provides a modular architecture where you use what you need. It's scalable for deployable and for decentralized applications. Now, key features include support for smart contracts using various programming languages, pluggable consensus method, confidentiality features such as using PDCs in the supply chain, higher throughput and low latency, so with higher transactions, it's perfect for finance. We're using the distributed ledger technology. You're able to host all these transactions into the ledger and access them quickly as well. And with a robust identity platform, it's very secure. Now, why Hyperledger? So it offers several advantages over Ethereum and traditional RDBMS. So first one is privacy and confidentiality. So with Hyperledger, you're able to have privacy and security using the platform for specified parties. For example, for tax and finance use cases. If you use Ethereum, for example, that one's more public, so all the data is available for everyone in the ledger to see. But using Hyperledger, you're able to actually share the required information only, nothing more, nothing less. And for RDBMS, it requires additional security measures to maintain these confidentiality. However, with blockchain, the security is built in. Permission network, so all participants have to be access to the network. If you're not a part of the network, you're not able to access the data itself. So with this, you, you're sure that your data is secure. Privacy is maintained as well. The next one would be scalability. So since it's able to handle thousands of transactions per second for the throughput we mentioned earlier, you're actually able to use this for supply chain for the large volumes of data that come in from multiple parties. So the suppliers, consumers itself, the different shippers in the middlemen. And using smart contracts, you actually make it more efficient and streamlined through the process. 
using small lines of code and Hyperledger Fabric, you're allowed to actually define these smart contracts to actually customize them to your specific business needs. For example, if you say at a certain input, X, when X is applied, Y will happen. So if you hit a certain amount of income into your supply chain ledger, it'll actually process these smart contracts towards the next step itself. So instead of having multiple people have to look through and manually process this information, it actually just automatically transfers based on these smart contracts. Now, another one is integration with existing systems. One issue people have normally when they develop on regular things such as Ethereum or even other networks or even RDA BMS is integrating with current systems. Now with Hyperledger Fabric, you're actually able to bypass that and just with regular CRMs or ERPs, ERP for Enterprise Resource Planning, and for CM, for customer relationship management systems, such as Salesforce, for example, you're actually able to integrate easily with these if you already have them set up. There's no prior knowledge needed in actually changing your architecture beforehand. You can simply use Hyperledger Fabric and develop a system around that based on what you have currently. And if you change your CRM as well, you can actually adaptability for that as well. Now, our first product for us is Cryptcore HLF. Now, with that, normal problems include complex technology, where you have to have certain developers who understand the, the components that go into a network, infrastructure, the node development process, setting up these smart contracts, high development costs, so initially you pay the upfront fee, but then later on it'll start paying itself off based on these benefits you get from using blockchain. Lack of quality resources and the technological limitations put in. Now, what we've done with Cripsy is we've made Cripcore HLF to simplify the process using a layer two solution, which connects your application to Hyperledger Fabric. And with this, we have six modules, Studio, Data Lake, Deployer, Fabric Admin, Network Monitor, and Wrapper. Now Studio is our flagship development, su development suite, which composes all of it. Data Lake is enterprise-grade analytics of your blockchain network. Deployer is a rapid module for setting up these cloud components on Azure, AWS, GCP, and this is cloud agnostic. So your provider, if you have a connection with, for example, Azure, you're able to use Azure as well, and with Cryptcore HLF, build on it. And this solution is low code, no code. With a network monitor, you're able to actually manage everything about your blockchain network using this GUI process to see your network help for your nodes. And next is wrapper. By using this APIs, this is where the low code, no code comes in, in simplifying this process. Now with Cryptcore HLF, we have certain key end product or key end consumers, such as Accenture, New Street Tech, Siemens, Trade Assets, Heineken, Minehub, Honeywell, Shipple, and even more. But again, for this presentation, we'll be focusing on Siemens and Henkel for tax chain, Heineken, Minehub for supply chain. So now going into the solutions itself. The first one which we have a use case for with Hyperledger Foundation is actually Minehub. Now with this one, we focus on the supply chain for the metals and semiconductors industry, where we're able to get transparency, traceability in real time and as close to the source as possible, and connecting multiple industries, such as the shippers, consumers itself, manufacturers, all throughout the entire supply chain itself. And this is in production since August 1st of 2021, with 20 total participants and slowly growing as well. Now, with this, like I mentioned, we connect the, we connect the mining companies, the bank for finance, insurance company for these actual assets as well, because they need to be protected, logistical support of the actual companies participating in the blockchain, and the dat data aggregators for the material as well. Now, from using Hyperledger Fabric instead of other components, we were able to get instant collabor collaboration between companies in this supply chain. And since Hyperledger 2.0 gave PDCs, we were able to actually make it, we're a working MVP solution in a short time frame. 
PDC between large and small size companies were easily integratable with each other. So if small enterprises weren't able to host it on their own network itself, using Hyperledger Fabric, they were able to host the PDC on their end for a smaller fraction of the cost, while still being able to participate with the bigger players in the field. And we reduced cost due to the quick streamlined process. So instead of a longer time, for example, shipping from Netherlands to Africa, that same process would take months to be able to complete all the paperwork and all the aspects, but using this, we were able to reduce it to a certain amount and streamline process. Instead of going back and forth, a linear streamlined process. Our next one involves Siemens and Henkel for tax chain. Now with this one, we've partnered to develop a blockchain platform for tax use cases. Now, the one we've done with Siemens is actually LTSD in Europe, or Long-Term Supplier Declaration. And in this, we currently have the one form, but it's compatible with other tax use cases as well, and can be onboarded onto the platform. And it's able to digitize the tax forms. Instead of a manual-based process, now it's all done through the blockchain, through the online platform itself, for all participants. Now, with this one, we have a dashboard to manage the E to E LTSD process, and it can be requested and issued digitally as well. We help fraud protection or fraud prevention due to certificates that contractors can't falsify, and using the blockchain can access easily quicker using the platform as well. Improved audit speed, because now with, these, with the immutability of the LTSD or with the ledger, you're able to access all the data beforehand, as required, and at each step of the process, everyone's participating within the chain to access these documents as well. And with this, you can actually utilize more of the free trade agreements as well, not just only in the one use case like I mentioned. So this is a quick overall image exploring the collaboration model between all the participants in the tax chain platform. Now, with that, we have the server managed node with the web access, self managed node operated by the company, while that's operated as a service management. Participants are able to access either or, both are different options which are applicable. And the tax chain platform using the different nodes is able to host the products and all the different all the documentation digitally on it as well. Instead of the back and forth model, this is the streamlined process from customers to suppliers while the company is connected as well. And both sides are able to issue the LTSD or they're able to request the LTSD. And if anything is wrong within the platform as well, they're able to actually reject it on the platform and it's, rec and it's recorded onto the blockchain until it's actually fixed by the companies itself. So even though it's a manual, even though it used to be manual, now it's been digitized. And with smart contracts, it streamlines the process and speeds it up as well. However, if there's any issues, anyone's able to manually audit just to make sure that the data is proper, accurate, and follows all procedures. Now, with this one, we actually talk more data itself. Costically, one task form is now slashed from approximately 120 euros to 30 euros, 75% per each document. Time to fill out one task form goes from days to minutes. And further gains from exploiting these trade agreements is improved. Like I mentioned, for tax chain itself, with Siemens and Henkel, it only works currently with LTSD, but we're actually open to more use cases, and we're currently developing it for different tax brackets as well. And like MindHub as well, we have the case study with Hyperledger, which goes more into the actual development process between Cripsy, Siemens, Henkel, more of the outcomes as well, and how the technology actually implemented more and actually gave more to these companies while development process using Cripcore HLF. Now, third solution would be Heineken using Hyperledger Fabric. Now, this one I'll give a quick background. For beer, hop is a major ingredient. So with this supply chain platform, it's actually more ESG focused. However, able to, if you scan a QR code on the bottle itself, you're able to see the entire process from start to finish of that one bottle. So 
it works both ways. For consumers, they're able to scan that QR code and understand what all went through for that bottle, when it was grown, when it was shipped. And for Heineken, for example, for each bottle, they're able to see how much water was used, how much CO2 was released for each one. So with their ESG initiatives, they're able to see whether they're actually following through with their actual data that promise consumers, or if they're falling behind, and what they need to do to actually work towards fixing it. Now with this one, at every step of the way, from agriculture to trader, distribution, malting, every step has the QR code. And with all participants on the blockchain, instead of the manual process-based or trust-based system, now using smart sensors and IoT devices, you're actually able to use Fabric to record all this data automatically and using these smart contracts, push forward the process to the next individual. And as each one scans, more of the story is built up per these bottles for these consumers as well. And this one's in production since 2019 as a pilot program for Heineken. And it was the basis for the Prodigal Berra Morati in Italy for Heineken. Our last one is the Fairchain Foundation. Now with the Fairchain Foundation, we focused on Moye coffee. So with most coffee beans, 90% is actually grown in a certain region. Now the problem is, there's a lot of fraud, believe it or not, within these actual coffee beans of where they were grown, when they were grown. So similarly to Heineken, for the supply chain use case, using blockchain, we connect all parties. Farmers, consumers, coffee brand, which is Moye Coffee in this case, and the processors for this coffee beans. Now with this one, it's been in production since 2019, and the platform actually works towards the same one for traceability for carbon and traceability for the actual coffee beans itself. So similarly, for the coffee beans, if you scan the QR code on the, on the bag itself, you're able to see what temperature was grown in, what land was used to actually grow the, plow grow the uh, beans, and make sure it's actually from the region itself. Now, if you want it from Spain, you'll know if it's from Spain. And with this as well, most people can actually work towards a loyalty platform on this. So for Fairchain Foundation and Moye Coffee, every time you scan the QR code and purchase this bag of coffee, one, you know the whole story. You'll also get access to the details of the farmer itself. And using loyalty platform, you're able to get a coin, which you give to the consumers. And the consumers are able to actually give that coin and pay to the farmers itself. Be basically being able to give back to the community and the farmers for putting their time and effort to getting you these coffee beans and growing them properly as well. So for supply chain and even for tax, it works for the consumers and suppliers. And even in the middlemen as well for the shippers, manufacturers, and such. Thank you very much. That was what we had. Is there any questions regarding the use cases as well for tax or even supply chain? Yeah. Yeah. So the question was whether it's applicable for sales tax and income tax. Any tax form currently in the euro is actually applicable for this as well. So right now it's only the one form, but we're able to onboard different templates, if you will, onto the platform and bring on participants to actually use the platform for the, whichever income tax, VAT tax. In this case, we talked about LTSDs. So any, any tax, basically, is actually onboarded onto the platform and can be used. No. Currently, it's more towards Europe as Siemens and Henkel are based in Europe, but it's applicable for others as well, if needed. Yes. Um, I would need to look at the actual ERPs itself, but generally what people have done using Cripcore HLF, for example, is with one of our nodes and one of our modules, they're actually able to connect to either the CRM or ERP. For Generally, mostly what we've seen is do the CRMs. Yeah. 
as most of them, for example, one is Salesforce, there's even HubSpot as well. Sometimes companies have their own actual application CRM they want to use. And the problem they have is integrating with them as well. Yeah, that's actually workable as well. So using the smart contract itself, you're able to actually tweak it based off what you require. So for example, if it's cross country within Europe, I'll just get, give that example, then you're actually able to put the tax from the first one, tax from the second, and it'll help calculate as well and work through. So the main one for that one is actually the documentation being secure, immutable, and transparent as well for what you're paying, what the document actually is, and who's actually all involved with that document. And like I mentioned, it's streamlined using the smart contracts, but you're able to actually manually audit when required. So if you see something's wrong from your end, you're able to reject it as well. Yep. Right. Thank you very much.